If you thought a console could contain this virtual vixen, you're dead wrong. Lara Croft has a face that launched a thousand products or more, and Tomb Raider is a multi-billion dollar empire. Just think, 11 years ago, nobody ever heard of Lara. Then, in late 1996, her creator got a shock. I remember going down to the uh, game shop in the high street, standing in a queue and having people both ahead of me and behind me holding copies of the game and talking about how excited they were. And it was just this really strange feeling, realising that it actually was going to be majorly successful. Toby's hard-nosed heroine was a hit. Shortly afterwards, Lara landed on the cover of Britain's The Face magazine a spot typically reserved for real-life high fashion trends. That was the defining moment that made a statement that we had something that was truly going to become mass market and successful. 249 magazine covers later, Lara was a worldwide phenomenon, signing lucrative international deals. You've got Tomb Raider scooters and Tomb Raider motorbike helmets. In France, Lara was made into a postage stamp. In Spain, she's been the face of SIA. They had a whole series of advertising based around Lara. <laughs> For more than a decade, advertisers have sought a piece of Lara to help boost sales. But how does IDOS do this without selling out? That's where Janet Swallow comes in. As VP of licensing, she's called daily by folks looking to stamp Lara on anything, from lunch pails to garden hoses, pizzas to bed sheets. Rarely does a product make the cut. IDOS as a company is very, very protective over Lara, so we're very careful with the merchandise that we choose. We've had two odd requests. One of them is a racehorse owner called, say, could he call his racehorse after Lara, which we declined. We were really worried that it would fall at the first hurdle, so we said that was no. And the second one was a tulip grower in Holland to name one of their branded tulips after Lara, which we thought was quite nice. While the official Lara tulip grows, other deals, such as Lara Croft knickers, wilt. I think maybe because that's quite a hard act to follow, you know, to put on some uh, underwear that's got Lara Croft on it with Lara's signature. I think it's a tough one. It was the weakest. Comic book publisher Top Cow approached Idos about serialising Lara's adventures in a monthly comic title. Idos loved the idea, and the series ran for five straight years. That same year, in pages of another kind, Lara Croft model Nell McAndrew posed for Playboy in the controversial spread, Lara Croft Nude. IDOS pulled the trigger on a lawsuit, forcing Playboy to pull those copies from shelves and alter the cover. Perhaps the strongest deal in the history of the franchise went down in 2001. Lara Croft had all but conquered the game world. So, what's a young woman to do? Simple, head to Hollywood. But first, film producer Lloyd Levin had to convince studio execs to take a little gamble on Lara. There was very little awareness within the movie industry about the potential of video games. When we were submitting the property to the studios, there were a number of cases where we had to submit PlayStation consoles so they could play the game. Video games didn't have a great history of silver screen iterations. Box office busts like Super Mario Brothers turned off much of the game-based film viewing public. It was somehow assumed that it just wouldn't work. We never had any doubt, and we knew that it was a great opportunity to actually do something that was a little bit unprecedented. Paramount took a swing at the pitch and hit a grand slam. With heavy hitter Angelina Jolie filling Lara's boots, Tomb Raider 1 grossed almost $50 million opening weekend, 300 million total. The film eclipsed Alien as the highest moneymaker with a female lead. A second Tomb Raider followed in 2003, and buzz about a third movie can now be heard worldwide. Looking ahead, there's sure to be plenty more Lara coming your way. From an animated series to a theme park, the whole world is still Croft crazy. The fact that she's 10 years old in game is quite a long time. So I think she's a digital icon for computer games, not just for now, but forevermore. Rather like James Bond has survived 40 years in the movie industry, Lara Croft is the digital icon of the computer games world. As a franchise, Tomb Raider has done just about anything a video game can do. 
but there's always room for another first. Through the years, Eidos has chosen one young lady to be Lara. For the first time ever, all past live-action Laras come together for a high-profile photo shoot. For Ian Livingston, creative director at Eidos, it's a family reunion of sorts. I've been so pleased to be the real Lara's father, to see all my daughters back here in one room again, all giggling and reminiscing about their days with Lara. It's fantastic, and they're all enjoying it, I'm pleased to say. I think I'm the only one who's really aged. They all look amazing. Here's a year-by-year -year look at a decade of devastatingly dashing dames. It has changed my life. Even now, actually, I still get lots of letters from people all over the world, which is just mind-blowing. I can't believe people still associate you with the character and just really still are big fans of the game itself. Having a child is amazing, what can I say? It's the best thing that I've ever done, and I think it really makes me feel realise what life's about. It kind of puts everything in perspective. The first time when I heard about Lara Cross, when my friends were playing this game day and night, and I was like, what are you playing? What, what are you obsessed about? They said, oh, this is Lara Croft, you know, she's really hot. And actually, you do look a bit like her. And you've got the same name. It was meant to be. When I went to character, I felt very strong, very confident, very sexy, very powerful, because, you know, Lara Croft is all that. I was the youngest ever, so I was just turned 17. When you get into the outfit, you're a changed person. You're just in the role of Lara Croft, and you can do anything, and everyone looks at you like you just stepped out of the video game. I think it's a feeling that I'll never have again. My best memory of being Lara Croft was my biggest fan, who was from Amsterdam, and I think he bought my wisdom teeth on the internet. I think that made his day, really made his year. I think when I became Lara, I didn't know who I was as a person. And traveling with a group of people around the world, especially being 17 and new, it kind of made me who I am today. So it meant a lot to me, and I'll always remember it. I definitely felt like character transformation because it was really stepping into Lara's skin. I was really out there and ready to kick some ass. I was extremely tall with my boots and it was just really intimidating. People would really be, you know, like astonished. And I love to make people smile, I love to entertain, so it was, uh, it was great fun. It's just really nice that you can see that some fantasies do become reality. Do they ever? The photo